insightful podcasts by informative hosts. Insights into Things, a podcast network. Welcome to Insights into Teens, a podcast series exploring the issues and challenges of today's youth. Your hosts are Joseph and Madison Whalen, a father and daughter team making their way through the challenges of the teenage years. Welcome to Insights into Teens. This is episode 40. Uh, mother daughter Q and A. Today we're gonna change things up a little bit. I am yep. your host, Joseph Whalen. My lovely co-host, Madison Whalen. Hello. And our special guest this week, Mommy <laughs> Michelle Whalen. Hi, everyone. So this week is a uh, ten. I guess every ten episodes, we we tend to do Q and A sessions. Yay, number forty. This is number forty. Uh, Mommy has not been part of our Q and A sessions yet. Nope, this is my first oh, one. We've gone forty episodes and haven't done a Q and A session with you. No. Well, I have been in. You You've know, been part of the show. I've yes. been part of the yes. show, but this is my first Q and A. So I will sit back, uh, run the board, and Munchkin. I will turn it over to you to conduct the interviews. I do have some media helpers to try to to illustrate a little bit more on a few of the questions. So don't rush through the questions. Uh, give me a chance to put some some content in as we go along. Alrighty, Daddy's All right. plussing it. Yeah. So I will turn it over to you, <clears throat> my dear. Alrighty, so unlike our usual Q and A's, we don't have this divided into sections. We just, I just basically we do. It's just one section. <laughs> yeah, I just like looked up a bunch. I just looked up great questions to ask your mom, and this is what I got. Okay. Of course, um, I don't know what the website is called, but I did cite the website. Thoughtcatalog.com. Yeah, sorry, yeah. I don't really read off of. I don't really read off of our cited websites. That's fine. Don't judge. We don't judge. There's no <laughs> so judging. yeah, um, it was actually fifty questions to ask your mother, but I only went with thirty-five because some Cause of the, the questions. the rest weren't that good. Well, I didn't feel like they should be on the podcast. Okay. So getting right into it, number one, mommy. When I was little, what did you think I was going to be when I grew up? I don't know, cause I I don't think I really have you know even to this day you know I, I don't think you have a clear you know um goal towards like one thing right now like you like doing art you like doing science you like writing so you're you know i think you're still at the the point in your life where you don't know what you want to do with your life yeah bigger cause... i thought you'd be bigger <laughs> <laughs> uh. Nice. <laughs> nice. So, moving right along. Alrighty, so, question number two. Do you think I have more of your good qualities or your bad qualities? This is it, a fun one. <laughs> it depends on the day of the week. <laughs> oh, wow. Wow, thanks. No, I think overall you, you have, you know, a, a lot of... You know, our good qualities, Daddy and I, you know, together. So, you know, okay. overall, I think you're a, a good kid. Thank you. Overall. You're welcome. Overall. You have your moments. Yeah. On the day. Again. Yeah. Alrighty. So, question number three. What is the funniest thing I ever did or said or did as a kid? Hmm. <laughs> Let's see. <laughs> Still one of my favorite videos of all time. Yeah, that that would be, while, while you are a very funny and humorous child, um, 
that was probably like that that first real laugh thing and you just had a kick out of that rubber band and hurting mommy and that was yeah, the thing because you, you knew <laughs> that it was hurting mommy because i would say ow and that was, <laughs> and you just that was the funniest thing for and, you. And just, i know like as a child i know as we watch like some of my old baby videos and photos like i was a pretty violent kid like <laughs> yeah, as yeah. a toddler, I was like violent and loved yeah, all so, of that kind of stuff. So that would, stick was your thing. Yeah, yep. so that would be it. Alrighty, moving on to question number four. What would you have named me if I was the opposite gender? Well, we actually did have two names picked out for you. So obviously we had Madison if you were going to be uh, a girl. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, the boy name was going to be Mason. M A C E N, and your nickname would have been Mace, and that was actually Daddy's choice. And you would have had a purple lightsaber. <laughs> and you as would have had well. a purple lightsaber <laughs> as a little boy. I would have. Um, obviously named after Mace Windu. So yeah. Question five. Alrighty, so yeah, question five. This is a fun one. Did I look more like you or Daddy when I was a baby slash when I was little? Actually, you looked like Sam when you were born. If you look at your brother, your if My you brother, look yes. at baby pictures, um, you look exactly like Sam. Um, I've always said that you you look a lot like Daddy. Now you're starting to kind of morph and look a little. Like me, you're like um, a Pokemon. You're starting like to a Pokemon. evolve. Uh, you have yeah. my nose. Mm -hmm. Give it see, back. You know, and you've always had my nose. Yeah. Um, but you definitely have Daddy's eyes. Obviously, you have Daddy's hair coloring. Even though you know we can't. Really Nobody tell knows anymore. mommy's real hair color anymore. Yeah. Um, but your hair is starting to get darker. But I think you're still. You know, you're still going to have daddy's. Well, and that's you know. what happened with my hair. My hair, right. you know, when I was younger, my hair was bright blonde, which is what yours was. Mm -hmm. And then as I started to get older, my hair started to darken. And now it's really dark. <laughs> it's so dark you can't even see it. <laughs> so. I think that would be getting lighter. Yeah, well. Uh, yeah, well. Just saying. Thanks. Number 16. 16? What? Oh, my God, six. I know it wow. had a six in there somewhere. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, everyone in the audience for putting up with my nonsense. Anyway, number six. What children book... <laughs> what children's book did you read me to me the most when I was little? That would be There's a Wocket in My Pocket. By yes, it Dr. Would. Seuss. You were definitely a fan of Dr. Seuss. Who's not? I mean, Who's not? A, yeah. I mean, at that age. Yeah, you, you, you have just, to be. Yeah, Even you, now. You just Even listen now. to rhymes, like, as a kid. Right, but Walk It in the Pocket, that was, you, like, knew it by heart, because what was so funny was you couldn't read, but you memorized it from us reading it over and over, and I want to say... It was maybe cousin Tasha or cousin Lorana that you were sitting with during like Thanksgiving or something. Yeah, I and you that. were reading it, but you weren't reading it. You were just reciting it because you knew which you knew picture. What, right, you knew what, what, what words yeah, back, were what pictures. Yeah, uh, right. yeah, like back when I actually had my memory. <laughs> Right. Right. right, and and I I, I want to say it was probably Lorana, and and she was like, oh my God, Madison knows how to read. I'm like, no, she just doesn't memorize. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I didn't know how to read, but I knew how to memorize it. Right, right. So that was definitely your your favorite book. So I think we're on question seven. Yep, question number seven. Oh, this is gonna be fun. <laughs> what was the most annoying thing I did as a baby? Asked a lot of questions. Just a lot of questions. <laughs> um, I don't know if there was anything really annoying, you know, besides your normal baby things. Like, I can't think of anything that was, you know, that you yeah, intentionally I mean. did as a, a, you know... You were pretty fun as a baby. Yeah. Yay. You know, yeah. we were very, very fortunate. We, you know, we 
went out a lot with you as a baby, and I think there was only really like one there was that time. Olive Garden the episode. Olive, yeah, there was just really one time that we had to actually leave some place that we had gone because you just were so upset we couldn't get you to calm down. Um, but we, you know, we flew. You know, you you went on an airplane as a baby. You know, we would drive, and you know, you would be fine in in the car. We'd go to restaurants. We'd go. Uh, you know, to Dave and Buster's and stuff. So there really wasn't anything, you know, like you never really had a lot of temper tantrums. You know, that was really, you know, I think the the biggest problem was something must have happened to you. And, and we just we don't know to this day what it was where you would freak out on a changing table. So, like, if we would go to a public restroom or something and I'd have to put you on a changing table, you would freak out and I don't know what had happened to you maybe while you were being, you know, babysat or with somebody else. So there was some sort of trauma or something that had happened. So it really wasn't annoying because it wasn't your fault. It just kind of made it hard to change your diaper, you know, when we were out and about. So that's uh, really kind of like the only yeah. thing that I can I can think of. Yeah, you were you were pretty good. Thank you. We'll keep you. <laughs> Thanks. All righty. Num- number eight. Who helped you take care of me most often? Well, unfortunately, um, Grammy didn't really live nearby, so she really couldn't help. Um, and my mom, you know, would babysit every now and then, but, you know, not to the point, you know, all the time. Um, you know, when, after you were born, I went back to work you know, a couple months after. So you went right into daycare. Um, and then at one point we had, you know, a friend babysit you. Um, but I don't think, you know, besides daddy, you know, being home. Wow, I didn't think I was going to get credit for this one. <laughs> <laughs> Trust me, in the beginning, you know, it, it, it's very hard, you know, for, you know, taking care of a newborn, especially when you've never done it before and, and you don't have the experience. Um, and I, I didn't have anybody and, and yes, I was very bitter at, at daddy, you know, in, in the beginning, I'll admit it. I, I have no, you know, I, it was just, you know, I would be waking up in the middle of the night, you know, to feed you, to change you, you know, to comfort you. And, you know, daddy would go off to work and it would be like, you're leaving again, <laughs> But somebody had to go yeah, to work. It happened pretty regularly. <laughs> yeah. You know, like Five days a home, week, you know. You know, and, and, you know, like, I just wanted to take a shower. And I, I couldn't do that, you know. Yeah. And, um, so, yeah, the, the first couple of months were, were kind of kind of rough, um, you know. But I think that that's kind of normal. You know, there are people that are very fortunate that have, you know, family that live nearby or, or, you know, lots of friends that live nearby and, and can kind of, you know, help out. And, and at the time, you know, we didn't have anybody like that. So Yeah, I think in general we lacked the support structure that a lot of families who were – because that, that's what happens is, you know, people grow up, they get married, they have kids, and they sort of stay in the same area that they've grown up in. And as a result, they've got family and friends in the area that can pitch in and help. Well, mommy's not really from this area and I am, but my family either had passed away or disowned me. So I didn't really bring much to the table when it came to a support network either. So it was sort of mommy and I kind of fending for ourselves and trying to lean on, on the charity of friends. Yeah. I can also, I also know that I, as a child, I would always go in the like aftercare and like daycares. Right. You vote, you, you know, that's another thing is that, you know, we unfortunately didn't have, you know, other options for you, but fortunately within the town that we live in, they do provide, that as something for for working parents yeah Um, and up until now in seventh grade you were able to mm -hmm. put me in those um and i think and i think also now uh, i have a better support system um with my red tent sisters so that if you know if we were going through everything now 
with, you know, having you and you being a baby, I, I actually have a better support system in place now. So God forbid if something, you know, were to happen now, I do have a support system of people, you know. Well, that was that, like the one yeah. time that daddy had to go to the hospital right. with my ulcer. Mm -hmm. um, we didn't really have anyone. Mommy happened to post on Facebook what was going on. And a friend of mine from high school was actually kind enough. For, you remember Regina? Yeah. She was kind enough to come and stay mm -hmm. with you so that right. mommy could come to the because, hospital. And that me. was also around the time that I was just kind of getting into Red Tent. And I wasn't really, right. you know, like I, I kind of felt funny asking for help. Where now I wouldn't even think twice about asking one of my, my sisters to help or vice versa. If they needed something, you yeah. know, I'd be there. So it's, it's a lot different now than it, than it was then, but we made it through. So, yeah. And of course, with me getting older, I've learned to take care. I've learned to be able to take care of myself. Right. So, How are the right. job interviews going by the way? Oh my God, daddy. <laughs> When's that first paycheck coming in? <laughs> oh my God. Question number nine. Yep. Okay. How did you choose my male name? This is going to be an interesting story. I can already tell. Why? What's the story? Well, I, I don't know, like, the entire story, but I do know that I could have ended up with at least two middle names. Well, that that's really more of a joke than anything else, the two middle names. Seriously? Yes. So um, the, the tradition, short version of the story, uh, in the Jewish religion is that you... Uh, to honor a loved one who has passed, you don't give them the same name. You use the initial of their name. So you are actually named after my father, Martin. And for your middle name, you are actually named after my grandmother who went by the name of Gertrude, but her actual first name, her legal first name was Esther. So you are M-E, and then obviously your middle name is Elizabeth, and your last name, obviously. Clearly, Daddy had nothing involved <laughs> in naming you. Yeah, clearly. Well, because you were going to get the boy name, I was going to get the girl name. So and, I lost out completely here. But then we obviously, being kind of cute, because we're, you know, well, I'm a cat person. Daddy tolerates them. Your initials are Mew. Yeah. But your Hebrew name was at least ironically based on my father. So ironically. Right. Mommy threw me a bone on that one. Right, right. Well, because it was kind of hard to find, uh, you know, a regular, you know, we I wanted a name that kind of flowed, you know, Madison Elizabeth. It just kind of, you know. Right. So you're at least Mew. Mew. Yeah. Question 11? 10. 10. 10. Okay. Oh, so close. number... Number 10, and I'm pretty sure a lot of kids have asked the, their parents this at one point in their life. What were my first words? And you do not want to say it. <laughs> you can lie and make it up. No one's going to fact check you. Yeah. Supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. <laughs> we list this on Facebook. There's no fact checking. <laughs> <laughs> no, obviously, yeah. Your first words were da 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 Oh, she, she was a rapper. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's it, move on past that painful question. Yeah, because, you know, oh. mommy doesn't want to hear that. It's okay. All righty. On to number 11. Number 11. What is your all-time favorite picture of me? Why don't you set it up? So my all-time favorite picture of you happens to be just a candid photo that we took of you. Uh, one of the first Ren Fairs that we mm -hmm. went to, uh, you were not even two years old yet, I'm guessing, probably a year and a half maybe, and it was just one of those shots that, uh, you know, that we got. I did it, you know, I, I printed it out as a black and white photo, and it has hung on my wall at work ever since. And anybody that comes by says that this is their most favorite photo uh, of you. It's just, you know, uh, adorable. It's a very cute photo. So, that, yeah, that's you my You were favorite. very photogenic at that age, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, now yeah. I'm like... Well, <laughs> and you'd love to get your picture taken at that age, too. Yes. Yeah, I would... Like, as soon as you saw a camera, you would go, cheese! And, yeah, you even know, if yep. you were taking a video. A video. And we'd be like, we're taking a video. And you'd be like... 
cheese. <laughs> you know, it's still. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, alrighty. Alrighty. Number. Number 12. This is another interesting run. Sorry. Okay. Did you want me as a boy or a girl? Honestly, I just wanted you to come out healthy. Well, that was, I- you know, like, you know, I, I didn't really have a preference. Um, I think it, you kind of botched that, by the way, because you did ingest the merconium. So, <laughs> just saying. Yeah, that whole two week stint in in the NICU. Um, but we we were very fortunate, you know. There are are um, you know, unfortunately, people that that you know have problems and and um, you know, I knew there were kind of health things you know from my side of the family so you always you know worry and and wonder and you know 10 fingers 10 toes you know is everything going to be developed are there going to be issues and you know and unfortunately you you did have a couple of issues um you know to the point where you know you ended up at you know children's hospital for a couple of days and um you know it was a very scary first two weeks and um you know, to to look at you now, you would have never known that you were a NIC unit baby, you know, and, and that's very fortunate because there are some, you know, babies that start out in the NIC unit and have health issues, yeah. you know, their whole life or they don't leave the NIC unit, you know, they don't survive. Um, so you, you were very fortunate. Not to toot my own horn here or anything, but since I've been thrown under the bus already for going to work, you know, and not staying <laughs> home and taking care of the kids. Those two weeks, Mm -hmm. I was working full time. I would go to the hospital to see mommy, and then I'd come to the hospital to see you. And in between there, I was picking up my mom and Sam to take them to the hospital periodically, too. Oh, and I was driving a conversion van that didn't fit in the car parking garage, so I had to walk like three blocks, too. Right, because... Just saying, Because at at the time, you know... uh, we were in a hospital. I had given birth to you at a hospital in New Jersey, and unfortunately, right after you were born, they didn't have beds available in the NIC unit. They had to transport you transport you to a hospital in Philadelphia, so you weren't even. There was you know, a special machine they had to put you on, right? And to there's transport only you. two in in the tri-state area that had it, and the one happened to be in Philly. At children's hospital yeah so you know so you were close by but you really weren't close by so for daddy to you know go to philadelphia and you know and and visiting hours for that and then you know drive back and then you know bring sam to to see you and and my mom fortunately you were only in children's hospital for a couple of days before they were able to transport you back to new jersey so then at least we were in the same right you know hospital but you know, it was definitely a, a a very scary, you know, first two weeks. And I can remember when you when um you told me once when they brought me back that even though you were in a lot of pain, you still tried to make an effort to get to my room and see me. Yeah, mm-hmm. I was, you know, I was in a, a special wing of the hospital. Um, I can't even remember what they they call it now, but it's basically for for the women who's babies are are either in the NIC unit or gave birth to babies that didn't survive. Um, And I was literally the last room down the hallway. And, you know, and to just go and see you took so much effort to walk down the hallway. Because mommy had just had a C-section. I had had a C-section, so... You know, I was still healing from that, and I probably could have called the nurse and gotten a wheelchair and, you know, been taken down, but it was like, I hated to bother people, you know, and yeah, just to be able to go and see you, you know, took took a lot of pain and, you know, to, to do, so, yeah. All right, happy memories. <laughs> Next question. All righty, so this one is also kind of related to happy memories. Oh, no. Oh, great. This start crying. No. What is your very first memory of me? Besides the one where she's literally <laughs> cut from your belly. Yeah. <laughs> well, I really don't remember that because I was on a lot of medication. Um, but, yeah, my first, you know, I, I kind of remember seeing you after you were, were born. Because it was a C-section, I was kind of like, 
strapped down onto a, a, a table, um, highly medicated. Um, but I really don't remember, you know, besides seeing the, the family picture of us, I, I don't remember, you know, what you look like uh, at that point. Really, the first memory was um, because I had had the C-section, I ended up becoming very sick as well. Um, so I was in recovery for 24 hours and we knew that there was something wrong with you and that they had to transport you. Um, and that was when we kind of were able to, to strike a deal with them for them to bring you to, to, to me so I could at least see you. I couldn't hold you, um, which was very upsetting, but I got to see you in your little space uh, capsule. Uh, yeah, <laughs> you know, that, that was how I got to, that's really my first memory of you. So it's kind of funny that, you know, you like NASA and, and space stuff because your first yeah. you know, thing was, was kind of, you know, in this little space capsule thing. So. Okay. So happy memories. <laughs> Let's uh, let's see. We can <laughs> smile and laugh about it now. Let's let's kick this yeah. up a notch, can we? <laughs> okay, next one. Okay, this is also related to it, which <sighs> is just awesome. Let's hope we can get through this as fast as we can. <sighs> okay. <sighs> when you were my age, number fourteen, did you want kids? Um. Yeah, I think I kind of did. I, I, you know, I don't think there was ever a point in my life where. You know, I, I know, you know, a lot of kids go through the, oh, I don't w ever want to have kids, or they do and they don't. I think at, at some point I always knew I, I wanted to, to be a mom, you know, just. Okay. Next. Alrighty. See, that wasn't so bad. Yeah, no, not too bad. <sighs> Number 15, this is going to be fun. What made me cry most as a child? All the beatings. <laughs> <laughs> the beatings will continue until morale improves. Exactly. Um, wow, what Daddy. made you cry the most? Hmm. Going to the doctor and getting shots. Yeah, you oh. weren't a big fan of that. But then again, still who not. Is? You know. Yeah, I'm still not. Like, like it got to the point where I had to lie to you and and you know, oh, we're just going out why are, and then all of a sudden we'd get to the doctor yeah. and you're like what are we doing here am i uh, you know and, and you're consequent am, am i getting shots am i getting shots and i think that was really you know you're one of your biggest you yep. know you would you would get all upset and teared up beforehand if you knew you had to get shots right and then you know and then they would do it so quickly that you never even felt it and we'd be like don't you don't you remember you yeah. know yeah so yeah, I mean, now it's more I keep the anxiety inside myself. I don't cry anymore. I just keep the anxiety inside myself. I've learned not to Feed cry. on the anger. That's <laughs> it. Turn to the dark don't, side. Don't. don't. Dark side. Don't. Blah, blah, blah. Question 16. What, what TV show would I watch every day? Hmm. What TV show could that be? Sesame Street? <laughs> <laughs> I think, it, you know, it, it's hard, you know, like nowadays there's so many different different shows out there. Um, you know, I definitely kept you away from Barney. Yeah. Um, even though I knew the theme. Deliberately. <laughs> yeah, deliberately. You even, know, though, I, even though, you know, somehow I, f I found out the theme song. Right. Yeah. And I think that was from, from preschool. Well, or, um, or all the memes of him getting shot during it. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, and like Teletubbies, uh, I, you know, and I think the, the biggest thing is with Sesame Street, it was something that Daddy and I could watch with you because there were different aspects of, of Sesame Street. Now, obviously, it's been, you know, 10-ish years since we've watched it, but it was always funny because they would always throw something in there that was really meant for the adults, um, you know, you wouldn't know this, but there was, you know, Daddy and I, there was a show that we used to watch called True Blood, and yeah. they did a takeoff on it 
call True Mud. Yeah. And it was just hysterical for us to watch. Like, you thought it was funny just because, because you know, it's a card of the characters yeah. and, and them, you know, being all addicted to mud. And we were cracking up because of the characterization of... We knew what the analogy was. We knew what all the analogies were. And, and they did that with, like, Mad Men, um, High School Musical, yep. um, uh, you know, and it was... So it, it made it very entertaining, you know, to watch, like, what spoof were they going to do, um, yeah. you know, now yeah. type thing. So Yeah, like, I actually watched this one series on YouTube called Talking Tom and Friends, which is based off of the mobile game. Right. And I've noticed that some of the episodes have actually been themed, like, like, you know, other things. Like, there was one that was actually themed to a Star Wars thing. It was like, nice. the main characters were watching... Oh, I remember you telling me that one. Yeah, yeah. the main characters were watching, um... The main characters, except, like, Tom and all his other friends, except for Angela, um, they were all into this one movie series called Space Conflicts, a.k.a. Star the crack Wars. off of Star right. Wars. Right. And, like, you could just tell that it was based on Star Wars, because, like, the lightsabers were, like, swords, and they were light up, and, like... Yeah. You could just tell it was themed for Star Wars. Right. Everybody loves a good analogy. <laughs> right, yeah, right. Was... So, so you know, again, that was one of the shows that, you know, it had the singing, it had the learning aspect. Um, you know, Sesame Street's been around for, you know, 40, 50 years, you know, almost yeah. 50 years now. And a lot of kids, you know, learned day-to-day -day things, you know, from it. And as time went on, you know... And they... as kids, Mommy and Daddy watched it, too. So Absolutely. it was like we could share that with you. Right. Yeah. You know, and, and you know, so it, it, it was definitely enjoyable to the point of, oh, God, we're watching the same episode again. We yeah. just saw this one 50 times. Because the other thing, too, is we didn't have... I don't think we really had an on-demand... At the time. At the really time, know. On Demand wasn't around. So we had episodes recorded. And so, you know, we would have like the same four episodes right. kind of. And then we had the little media player yep. thing pre iPhones and whatever. And that had like two episodes or three episodes on it. So, like, whenever we went someplace, you had your little movie thing. Or if yeah. we did an overnight, because you'd fall asleep to it. So. Yeah, and yeah. I remember you <laughs> saying this exact same thing about some door episodes. Yes, we yes. had, and yeah, that I think was that was on our on the DVR. We had like the same yeah. four episodes. Of Dora. <laughs> and like I would just rewatch, and you said I would rewatch it every oh, time, over, like it was a new over. one. Yeah, like oh yeah. So the next traumatic question, question seventeen. <laughs> All righty. Oh, um, okay. Oh great. This is this has got to be my favorite one yet. Did, number 17, did you ever lose me at a store or anywhere else? <laughs> I just, yes. I can, I can no, just I never did. I, can I don't know what that. you're talking about. The Space Mountain no. incident of 2012. <laughs> no, I, I, I don't recall, Senator. Um, <laughs> I plead the fifth. Uh, yeah. One time. One time. That's it. I think I have a pretty good track record, thank you. She made it yeah. to 13. One You had a 50-50 shot. <laughs> Two exits, you had a 50-50 shot, I, I you did. bet wrong. Okay. All right. Don't so, play roulette. So just, you know. Please describe this situation. So, okay. I personally have never been on Space Mountain. Okay, I time, don't go on roller coasters. Yeah, and okay? at that time I didn't go, and at that time I've never been on Space Mountain. Right, either. at that time you had never been on Space Mountain, but, but you did roller coasters and you decided you were going to do it. So, yeah. you were young. Around you, seven, I think. You were tall enough to go on the ride, old enough to go on it alone, but I didn't want you to have to go through the queue all by yourself. So, it was the end of the night. <clears throat> when they did, I think I don't know if it was extra magic hours or not. So the park wasn't terribly crowded. Yeah, and Daddy had already gone home. Because... Daddy had already left to go back to the resort. Because I was an old fogey, I know. Right. So yeah. it was, the, and that that's something that you know used to happen where you and I kind of had mommy daughter night at, at the park or whatever, mm -hmm. and you know we go through the queue and everything. And we we get to the point where you get on the ride, and I'm like, oh, where's the exit? And they tell me, and I'm like, okay. So I walk to the exit, not even realizing that there's 
two exits. Yeah. So I'm standing fun. at the one and I see people coming off and, you know, and, and I try to be very observant. So like when you get on a ride, I look to see who you're in front of and who you're in back of. So I can, I can spot you, you know, if I can't see you cause you're short, I can find whoever's near you. And people are getting off and I'm looking and I'm like, I don't think the wait was this long. And finally I go over to the cast member and I'm like, is this the only exit? And they said, no, there's, there's another one over there too. So now I freak out. So I go over to <clears throat> the other one and I wait there and, and I'm like asking and they don't know what I'm, I'm talking about. Um, at this point you didn't have a cell phone, but Fortunately, you knew my cell phone number. Yeah, that's a good thing. That was a good this. thing. Um, and so when you get off the ride, again, there's two different exits, and then they have this long um, moving sidewalk that yeah, takes you and, up. And the thing is, at that <clears> point, <throat> it was broken. Like, right. I just want to quickly go over my point of view of this. <laughs> Don't argue just, now, kids. Okay, Don't I'm argue. Talking. So I had gotten off the ride. Right. And I saw, like, there were two different ways to go. And I saw people were mainly going up the one broken moving sidewalk because mm-hmm. I've been on, like, Pirates of the Caribbean and other rides that l- had other it. Other rides right. that mm-hmm. had it. And I'm like, and I was confused on where I was supposed to go, so I just went with the crowd. And turns out it led me to the one store, but right. you weren't there. But I wasn't there, so. And being a Disney princess that you are, you know all rides end <laughs> in gift shops, right? <laughs> right. Yeah. So, of course, I realized this whole thing. And when I get off, everybody's just kind of standing because they're waiting for the walkway to move instead of people actually just walking. And then I happen to look at my phone and realized that I had a missed call from Florida, from a, a Florida number, and I listened to the call, and it's a cast member saying, hi, we have your daughter, she's in the gift shop, you know, we're we're waiting for you. And so I frantically, like, move out of my way, I gotta go get my kid! You know, I make it up my, I make it up the way, and there you are standing with a cast member um, and another mom who... They were either on the ride with you before or after, and when you got to the um, gift shop, she saw you wandering around and realized you were probably lost and brought you over to a cast member. They asked if you knew my phone number. You did, and that's when... Yeah, I think if I didn't know They called know your, me and... Yeah, I'm pretty sure if I didn't know your phone number, I would have been lost for good. Uh, you wouldn't have been lost for good. No. We knew we knew where you were. It was yeah. just a matter of you know. So okay, let's move on to a <laughs> nicer memory. Let's not yeah. dwell on that one. What's what's question eighteen? Question eighteen. What was the first movie you brought me to a theater to see? Well, we we brought you. You know, as we had mentioned before. You know, we used to take you places all the time. You know, when when you were a kid. But the first movie that it was just you and I. You know, that was your, you know, first real going and seeing, you know, just to, to see it because you kind of wanted to see it also would be Tangled, which came out in 2010. Wow, that was a long time ago. Yeah. You Galaxy were, far. You were a wee far, far away. away yes, yeah. <laughs> you were a wee little sprite back then. <laughs> yeah. Okay, good memories there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's at least. What's uh, oh, we got another, we got another good one coming up. Here. Oh goodness! So Yay. What's what's nineteen? Nineteen is. Oh yeah, what song did I listen to on repeat when I was super young? And this will be a fun one. Okay, this one we got some some audio on here. Okay. Yay. So should I wait to? No, go ahead. Okay, so there were a couple of different kids albums that that you were were into um so one of them was a it was like a mother goose rocks type thing so it was mother goose songs that were in the style of various artists so like one was kelly clarkson and one was madonna um but the the one album that we had that you know, we enjoyed listening to it as parents, um, happened to be by uh, the Bare Naked Ladies, and the album was Snack Time, and one of your favorite songs was Pollywog in a Bog.
Pollywog in a bog. You asked for it. Yeah. <laughs> and those puppets will not give me nightmares. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So what's up next in the hit parade? All righty. Number 20. What is the nicest thing I ever said to you? Probably I love you. Aw. Aw. Isn't that what every kid does? No, not, not every, every well, kid. Not every, no. not every kid. I apologize. <laughs> not every kid. <laughs> Some kids are jerks. Yeah. Yes, yeah. your point. <laughs> Next. Alrighty. Number 21. What is my favorite stuffed animal? You mean you have more than one? Well, she does, but probably this one's famous. This yes. one, this one is, is is famous, and it would be Kitty Meow. I want this soon. I don't know. There we go. There okay. we go. Ready? Here we go. Sorry, technical it's difficulties. Kitty Meow. So Kitty Meow has is it Instagram? Kitty Meow actually has her own Instagram called Kitty Meow Travels. Um, because Kitty has gone on, (laughs) on every vacation with us. Um, so you have to give a little background on the fact that Kitty Meow has stunt doubles. Right. (laughs) Oh yeah. So Kitty Meow actually didn't start out as your toy. Um, she actually was mommy stuffed animal. Um, I have always liked orange tabby cats. Um, we, we used to have, uh, an orange tabby cat, mm-hmm. um, and it happened to be one of those things we saw in a store a couple of years before she was born and I had, you know, a stuffed animal. Um, and then when you were born, kitty meow kind of, you know, you kind of gravitated towards it. Um, and I had always, um, had friends that had who were parents who had horror stories of you know their child had this stuffed animal and they would lose it and they'd have to go on ebay because the toy would be discontinued and they'd never find an alternative um and it actually even happened to to me as a as a kid i had a stuffed dog called wolf um and he got lost and i was hysterical for days until my mom was able to kind of find that that substitute um so again i didn't want to have to go through that so fortunately they still were selling the orange tabby cat in the store and i bought two extra ones <laughs> <laughs> so so um so there was one that we kept in the house or in the apartment at the time one that stayed in daddy's car and then one that stayed in in mommy's in my car um so whenever we would go out you would always be like oh i want to take kitty with me and we would say no kitty will stay here kitty can rest and then we'd get out to whichever car <gasps> kitty's here and it was like oh it was magical kitty just happened to you know to to show up and can you tell me how i ruined that <laughs> Um, cause I think the one day we kind of forgot or like you were leaving the car and you, you know, we always said, Oh, leave Kitty in the car. Kitty will stay here. And I think Kitty came in the house and it was like, oh, there's two. And then I was like, oh. um, so yeah, so actually all three and ended up together. Um, and, yeah, and I remember- so Kitty has a stunt double and an understudy. Right. Yeah. I've had- and, and Kitty actually got lost in, in Disney world too, actually. Yep. Um, one of our our trips we had come back at night and they were doing movie night we we sat for a little bit and you left kitty didn't even know got up you know went back to the room and then in the morning because we would always be like okay where's everything where's kitty like that we'd always do the the check of do you have your poncho do you have your camera do you have your where's kitty and we realized we didn't have kitty um, and we were like, okay, well, we'll figure it out. And we knew at that point we had stunt doubles, but again, it was still, you know, Kitty was missing. Member of the family. Yeah. Member of the no family. No one left behind. Nobody left yeah. behind. Um, we called, uh, Guess, Lost and Found yeah. and Guest Services. We told them, you know, where we were staying, where we had been, what Kitty looked like, da 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 da, da. And it was what, the next day? Next day, yeah. They had her sitting on the bed back in the, the resort. Was that when they, they made the thing with the towels around her, too? I think so. They made, yeah. like, a little thing, like, so, look, here she is. And 
after that trip was when we actually went and we got the the animal tag made right. that has her name and has my name and my phone number on the back of it so that if we ever lost her again, yep. somebody could call us. So, so uh, yeah, and I just wanted to say when I, when I had my old room and it was super messy, I would always go on the hunt for like finding to get the triplets together, and finally I have them all in my room. And right, because some been, like, would end seats. up under your one would end up under the bed, one would end up in the corner. So yeah, now yeah. now we all have them, you know. All nicely. right. Question twenty two. All righty. Question twenty two. What years of my life did you dread the most? I'm I'm still waiting. <laughs> yeah. Right around 16, I'm guessing. Okay. You know, every year there's always some sort of challenge. Um, you know, obviously you going through um, puberty has been... Challenging? Challenging. I can definitely say I think when I started sixth grade might have been one of the most challenging times. Yeah, sixth grade yeah. was definitely a, a tough year for you. Um, I mean, like... Daddy told me when we were talking about it um, that I was just as hysterical in kindergarten because that's when I first started getting homework and I didn't really fully understand it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, you know, I think every, like I said, every year kind of has that new challenge. But now you're, you know, you're kind of of the understanding that you know there's going to be a challenge and you deal with it a lot better than, you know, like I remember, you know, you getting hysterical about learning to tie your shoe. You, you know, I'm never going to get this. I'm never going to learn how to tie my shoe. And, you know, we kept saying you're going to learn. And, you know, and then once you get that, you're going to find something else that you're going to need to learn. And, you know, and 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 you'll figure it out and you'll be fine. And, and you know, then there'll be something else new to, to learn. Just yeah. at some point in time. You'll learn that you adapt and you'll stop panicking beforehand. Yeah, I remember when I first started getting my mood swings. Like, I was always like, I'm never going to get over this. I'm going to have them for the rest of my life. And then you just said, you will, but you're going to get over it. And eventually I did. I have them very rarely now. Mm -hmm. yeah, you they you know how to manage them. We had one them. this week, though. Yeah, I had a bit of a breakdown this week. We had to yeah. deal with that. <laughs> Look, that was like one. Look, I'm it not. It happens. Almost every day I would have uh, at least one mood swing. I had a complete breakdown at work today, we so all have I can't bad days. say. It, 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 I know. It I've hasn't had, like, stopped. I have less bad days now because right. I've yeah. understood. Like, mm -hmm. All right. What's the next good question here? Let's get a good question in here. All righty. What years of my life were we the most close? I'm still waiting. No. Um... <laughs> No, um, I think we're, we're, I don't, I think when you were younger, and I think this is just normal for, um, you know, for, for everyone, um, you know, you constantly want to be with your parents, you constantly want to hang out with them, um, you know, watch television, watch movies and, and play games and whatever. Um, and I think more so when you were younger, you did stuff with me more so than than daddy um you know we kind of did the the tea party thing and playing with the dolls and arts and crafts and things like that and ate a lot of plastic food <laughs> and you made daddy lots of lots of plastic meals yeah i remember i used to be a very young cook right yeah. um and now you cook much better now by and the now way. you actually yeah, do thanks. cook food um yeah whereas now you know you tend to spend more time on your own which there's there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, I'm I'm becoming well. I am a teenager now. Right, yes. you are officially a teenager. Yeah, um, finally. Yeah, but like, there's nothing nothing wrong with that. It's you know you know we still do things together. You know, like when we were trying to figure out you know to go to what was it when we were doing Shady Brook Farms or something like you didn't want to go like at all or something and we were like come on we'll go we'll have fun um, because I know at some point there's going to be other things that you're going to want to do, not necessarily with us, but with friends or, or things like that. And that's just, you know, normal as you, you get older. Cause even like on the weekends now, you know, like, Hey, can I go out and play with my friends? And you'll go out for a couple of hours and, and play with the friends. And that's fine because you know, the friends that you, you have around here, you don't see all the time anymore because you're in middle school, they're in elementary school still. Um, 
and and that's okay but I, I you know like now you don't spend as much time with with just me whereas you spend a you know in some cases a little bit more time with daddy playing video games because I don't play the video games but when you were younger you didn't play the video games so you kind of you know your um, interests have kind of you know changed and and things like that um but we still, you know, the two of us still, you know, do stuff like if, you know, Daddy and Sam go and do something, you know, and they have like a guy's time, we kind of do, you know, our girl thing. We, you know, go to Red Tent or Pink Tent. Yeah. And um, like- you know, so we, we still have our things. We're, we don't spend as much time just you and I as we used to when you were younger. But, you know, it's just, um, you know... I mean, I can definitely say we're a lot better than other families mm-hmm. who have oh, kids yeah. my and, age. And, and it's not to say that, you know, we it's not that we don't want to. It, yeah. It's just the time constraints or things like that. And, you know, but I, I mean, think also we also still do a lot of things as a family, sure, you know, yeah. and, and that's a big thing where not a lot of families. Like podcasting. Like yeah, podcasting. You know, like that, this is definitely <laughs> our bond. Uh, Bonding time. Well, this is normally you and Daddy's bonding time, and then Daddy and I have have our podcast, um, you know, that we do. And, you know, usually the way the the weekend kind of falls is, you know, one of the days of the weekend, it's going out and doing something together as a family, depending on what the weather's like or whatever. And, And sometimes it's just going to the farmer's market together, you know, to go shopping or, hey, let's go to the mall and walk around, you know, together and grab lunch or something. Um... You know, so we, we do tend to do, or if there's a movie, you know, we, you know, we'll do the movie at least, you know, once a month or so. Yeah. Or, you know, like, hey, we haven't had movie night at home in a while. Yeah, I would, you know, like, when, if, even if we couldn't go see the movie in the theaters, we would always, like, try to find it at home. And I remember- Yeah, find, you know, something that we have, you know, that on Netflix or like, hey, we, we missed this when it was in the theater, but we have it on DVD now. Let's. Let's yeah. make popcorn and, and do a movie night, so. Yeah. All right. Okay. Question Next. 24? Um, I think so, yeah. So, what is the first word that comes to mind when you hear my name? Munchkin. <laughs> yeah, my nick. The infinite, my infamous, my infamous nickname. Infamous. Infamous nickname. I'm sorry. I don't know how to pronounce that. Um, Does that mean if we weren't using the branded version, we could just call her a donut hole? <laughs> That's just weird. <laughs> That's just weird, Daddy. <laughs> okay, 25. What is the worst part about being a mother, and what is the best? The worst part is seeing you in pain or upset where I can't fix it. Um, and the best part is seeing you succeed in and and, you know, just achieving things and and you know seeing a problem and you know now you're getting older where you know you can solve a lot of the the problems on you know on your own you had you know an issue with some bullying the other day and you handled it you know while you were upset when you were you know explaining it to 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 me when I got home But, you know, you said you guys went to the teacher, you did the right thing. You know, it was all the things that we've talked about. Knock that one out of the park. You know, all all the different years when you've had issues and we said, okay, well, tomorrow we're going to talk to the teacher. Tomorrow we're going to talk to the camp counselor or whatever, you know. And here was one where you took care of it. We didn't have to do anything. So, very proud. Okay. Six. 26, sorry. 26. 26. It's like six, wait. <laughs> I know, like, now we're confusing that now. I was regressing, <laughs> sorry. Yep. Alrighty, 26. <clears throat> what was my favorite flavor of baby food? I would have to say it was probably bananas. Really? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you were definitely, you definitely liked the fruits more so than anything else, and I think that's kind of normal just because of the sweetness yeah. of it. But I think definitely bananas, because I even remember there were times when we didn't have banana baby food, but I would take a banana and and mush it up for you, and boom, instant baby food. All right. Yeah. Nice. All righty. This is going to be 
cool, I guess. Um, 27. In your opinion, what is my worst habit? Monologuing. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Um, and actually, it's kind of just funny now. Um, I think a little bit would be right now the technology distraction. Um, you know, like, hey, it's time to do laundry or do a chore and like the phones in your hand as you're like bringing down, you know, or, you know, you're walking around the house with the iPad or something. So I think it's the, but I, I think it's just society in general that we, you know, we do that. Um, yeah. Cause you know, we're addicted. Yeah. And you've talked about that before on, on your podcast. Yeah. Indeed. That was, that was one of your earlier, uh, episodes. Yeah. So I, I think that's just the, you know, like in the beginning of the school year, it was a little rough getting ready for school and, you know, and, uh, all the other years before you've done before and after care. So we had a time frame, but if we were five minutes late, it wasn't a big deal. Now you catch a bus and you, we have to be at the bus by a certain time. And there was one day last week or something where we literally got to the bus stop and it was like, Oh look, there's the bus where normally we try and get there a few minutes early yeah. to kind of make luckily, sure. Luckily since then I, we haven't missed Right. It. And we've gotten, so, you know, so that's been, you know, it was a challenge to kind of get into that, you know, thing like, come on, we need to get up. We need to, you know, move. And you know, the fact that I really don't like getting up in the morning. Right. And nobody's, that, that doesn't and, and no you one. have to get up really early. Yeah. Um, so I think really it's the, um, you know, the sense of, you know, you have a chore to do and, you know, or when we tell you, hey, hey, laundry misses you. Yeah. That kind of, no. I have to be honest, that kind of annoys me. Well, it's intended to. Thanks. It's intended to, but the, but the other thing, too, is with all this technology, you can set yourself a reminder so that mommy and daddy don't have to be right. like, hey, laundry misses you. Yeah. Question 28. Yep. Which television character reminds you of me the most? Hmm. This is a thing. I couldn't come up with one for this one myself. Oh, I don't know. Excuse me. You don't have any music for that? <laughs> I didn't have anything queued up. No, Nothing queued sorry. up? Um, well, I know you're very into SpongeBob, but you don't remind me of of SpongeBob. Um, Perhaps we can take a pass on that question. Yeah, I, I think you're just you're so, so unique. You don't remind us of a character. Well, yeah, I was just gonna say, like you, you're just so you know, you're very artistic. You, you know, you're you're musical. Um, Who was you're the very girl's great. name from? Uh, oh, what was the one show she used to watch with Crunkle Stan? Oh, um, Grumpy oh Falls? Mabel. That's who you remind me of. Like smart, independent. Okay. You know, take charge. Yeah, I could see that from Gravity Falls. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I can see that. I mean, she loves crafts. Oh, um, and she has braces. And she has and you braces, have braces yeah. now. So yeah, I think the only real difference is the fact that she's a little more positive than I am, and I'm more like Dipper, thinking on the realistic. Terms. Yeah, you're, you're, you're kind of. Yeah, of you're two. a combination of the the two. Like if yeah. we took you and split you in two, you'd be then right. the two of them. Right. Yeah. So. Good one, Dad. Good one. Thanks. 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 Pulled that one out. Yeah. Golf clap. Uh, 29? Yep. Another one. What song reminds you of me the most? I don't have anything for this one. Mm. There, you know what? It, it's funny because you kind of go through different phases. Um, there was, um, well, obviously, like, Pollywog in a Bog was, you know, I, reminds me of that phase. Um, there are some Celtic Thunder songs, you know, from... Yeah, from Celtic Thunder! <laughs> I'm pretty sure no one watching in the audience... I'm pretty sure most Everyone, of the people... Just Google no it, people. One. It's fine. Yeah, just Google um, it. <laughs> you know, and then, that. you know, now, you know, now it, it, I think it's cute that you're into a bunch of songs from Glee, which was a, a show that I was totally addicted to when it was, you know, when it was on... You know, I was watching it. It's actually on Netflix now. Um, I went and saw it in concert, even. And um, I saw you the other day watching it. And I was watching yeah. video clips while I was working. Um, so, it, like, you having an interest in it is like, 
oh, you know, and and so, you know, like in the morning when we wait for the, the bus, there's specific songs that we listen to. And I know when you used to pick her up from school yep. or drop her off, you had set song. Like we all kind of have We all that, have the playlist of the our playlist life. playlist, yeah. you know, like, you know, as we've, we've mentioned, you know, when you were younger for bedtime, there was a set song list that we went to and it was ABC and it was Mary Had a yep. Little Lamb and I'm a yeah. Little Teapot. And, you know, so there are certain songs, again, that, you know, when I hear it, it reminds me of a certain, You're you know, an evolving reflection of the music industry. Absolutely. Yay. Next question. Alrighty. So I think we are on to number 30 now. Yep. Did something ever happen to you when you were a kid that scared you? Finally shifting away from all the memories and stuff and finally going to a question. Now we're focusing think, on her terrible I, memories. Oh, thanks. <laughs> I think this is the only, like, real one that's focused mainly toward your life. Cause so when I was a kid? Yeah. Or it could be, like, around that kind of Like, did you like, ever get lost at Space Mountain <laughs> as a kid? No, but I do remember, and this was back in the day when, you know, you'd go to the store with your parents, and when your parents lost you, they'd paid you. Yeah. You know, Michelle Sandbank, can you please come to... And that was what was so funny, because that wasn't my last name, um, but when we were in a store, that's what, you know, I always got paged as, so I'd hear... So you had an alias even as a kid. I had an that. alias as a kid. Um, yeah, because I would go wander off, you know, in the store, and now nowadays you'd, you'd never do that. You'd never let your kid wander um, like that. So I don't... Yeah, I don't think there was anything really... You know, like, I'm sure at the time I was scared, you know, when it happened. But, yeah, like, back then, you know, they didn't lose you. They, you know, they would just paid you. So. so much for trying to dig up those repressed memories. Sorry. <laughs> so much. I'll have a nightmare tonight about Next it question. Uh, All righty. So, question number 31. Was I a fast or slow learner in school? It would depend on, on what it was. Um, you know, going back to, you know, how we answered, you know, something before, there are a lot of times when you would get frustrated because you weren't learning it fast enough. You know, there were certain things that you picked up right away. Um, and then there were other things where it just took you time and, and practicing and, and you'd get very frustrated. Like I said, the tying the shoelace thing. That got you so upset that for the longest time we didn't buy you shoes that had laces um, just because you were so frustrated. And I knew eventually you'd learn how to do it, um, but you were just convinced, you know, it wasn't going to happen or, or writing your name and, you know, um, and things like that. So, you know, in a lot of cases, you're your own worst enemy. Um, yeah. Because we don't get upset and, and we don't. Right. You well, know, see, and sometimes what it is is. You need to learn how to learn how to do it. Yeah. And there are times that you just don't get the process of learning of that. And then once you understand it, you, you, yeah, the light switch goes off and you're like, up oh, and, and, and you run yeah. with it. Yeah. Uh, but sometimes you kind of have to think outside the box in order to understand how to grasp the problem, yeah. like word problems with math word problems. You know? Right. Right. Once you understand what it's asking, then you can do it. And it just takes a little bit of time right. sometimes to get to that point. Yeah. Right. 32. All righty, 32. What was the best drawing I ever made for you? Well, there's actually two. You, you've you always been an artist, you know, and yeah. I have lots of your artwork all over the place. Um, but the two that, that kind of come to mind um, are both pictures that you made for me that I actually have in my office. Um, the one, I think I actually had commissioned you to, to do both of them, actually, now that I'm thinking about it. One was I said, you need to make mommy as a superhero um, because somebody at work had said something about me being like Wonder Woman or something. And, and so the picture that we're seeing now, that was um, mommy as super mom yeah, one with of the, the red hair. Little, and, one of the arms is a little big. I that's noticed. okay. That's well, okay. You were like three I mean, when you did this. So. <laughs> she wasn't three. She was older than that. Oh, okay. I mean, yeah, that's, <laughs> yeah, that's, so, that's and, like my crayon face. Right. And what was really funny was when I, I remember sending the person who was calling me that, the picture, and she thought it was like hysterical that that was like my picture. Um, mm -hmm. And then the other picture 
was... Oh, I've seen this before. <laughs> was I said to you, I said, you know, our cat is Leota, and she's named after Leota from the Haunted Mansion. I said, it would be kind of funny if you incorporated our cat, who's Calico, that would be the coloring, mm -hmm. with Madame Leota. For those of you, you know, not familiar with the Haunted Mansion, Madame Leota is a fortune teller who gets stuck in a crystal ball and it's so just So you her decided head. to chop the cat's head off, <laughs> paint it blue and stick it in a fishbowl. So if you didn't know what you were looking at, you know, and, and it's the whole funny thing that, you know, the spirits... I mean, this one I can actually remember drawing. Uh -huh. like, yeah, and you did the blood dripping down from your name and yeah, everything. Yeah, I so, was yeah. pretty gruesome. Like, yeah, I that's... can... I know this was at least... Um, I was in at least third grade by the time I drew this, and to be and honest, years I'm of counseling so... later, and here you are. Yeah, so these, these would be two of my most favorite ones. So. <laughs> okay, next question. Alrighty, so um, do, 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 do. Oh, okay, this is gonna be a fun one. Number thirty-three. What was I most afraid of as a child? Before you, before you answer that, I will say we are out of media now, so. I was nice. I didn't go out and get a picture of this and put it oh, up on the big screen I for you. So just being a good father there. Oh my god! I swear, <laughs> if you did, I would, I would, I would walk out of this room right now. I would literally take these headphones off, just walk out. I have out. no idea what they're talking about. <laughs> so, mommy, what was she most afraid of as a child? What she's still most afraid of, and she'll probably be afraid of as an adult until, like, we get her a pet one, um, which, oh. <laughs> yeah. I was and when will that. that ever happen? Like, never, um, would be spiders. Yep. So glad you included that one in there so we could make fun of you about it. Jeez. 34. Yep. Okay, so second to last question. Overall, do you consider me a good kid? Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a second. You answered that earlier, and now it changed just in the course of this podcast. <laughs> I can change my mind. <laughs> yeah, she can. No, um, ab absolutely. I, I couldn't have imagined a more wonderful, caring, smart, talented beautiful you know young lady you know that that you are are turning into and you you make us proud every day um you know the try not to get upset you know the the biggest thing is i just wish you know mom mom and and grammy you know and your other grandparents that you know never got to to meet you um we're still here to, to see that. And in some way, I think they, you know, they're definitely looking down and, and you know, they're just as proud um, of you as, as we are. Good answer. Thank you, Mommy. And don't worry about crying. She was bawling her eyes out through the whole grief and loss podcast. I know. Uh, I know. I saw that one. <laughs> and the last question of today's podcast. All right. And I think you already answered this as well, even though we're going to go over it anyway. Just to grind that knife <laughs> a little more. <laughs> Are you happy with the way I turned out? No. <laughs> Just had like a little bit of humor, daddy bringing the laughs. I don't know which one laughs. Oh, there we go. There we go. Wait, wait. Um, there we go. <laughs> um. Uh, you know, to, to kind of, you know, reiterate, you know, of course, um, you know, again, you far exceeded, you know, I, we didn't, you know, I think as parents, you, you have expectations, you want, you know, your child to be smart, you want your child to be, you know, you know, all these different things, and you just hope and, and you try, you know, to, to, you know, uh, not push them to it, encourage but them, encourage them, guide them, to guide it. them to it. You know, like, would I like you to be, you know, a little bit more outgoing and, and try new things and, and stuff like that? Yeah. I think that's the one. 
that that would probably be, you know, the the one thing that I I wish you did a little bit more of. Um, you know, when you were getting ready to go to middle school, I was hoping you would get more involved in different clubs and different things, but unfortunately, the way that the the afternoon buses are, we didn't know how that worked and they don't have enough spots and blah 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 blah. There's a whole big to do with that. And the fact that I had no idea how to sign up. Right. We, you know, we, unfortunately, we didn't really know. So hopefully it's something that, you know, you can talk to your guidance counselor about so that maybe for next year, you can kind of get into certain things or maybe even later in the school year, find something. Um, but you never were interested in doing dance or karate or, or any like after school activity like that. So, you know, like, but and we were never the type of parents that were like, you must do this or you must do that. Yeah, and I have and to be thankful for you guys <laughs> not to be doing that because yeah, we don't live vicariously through you. Right. Yeah. You know, if you wanted to do something, we, you know, we would have done it. So you know, you join band through school and and you know and and you know all your other you know activities and and hobbies that you have are all things that you kind of found on your own. You right. know, we didn't push you. We just kind of help you know give you tools to to you know move forward yeah you know with them i mean like back to the drawings mm -hmm. example you said like you gave me a basis on some drawing techniques because you knew that i um that i was um able to draw and stuff mm -hmm. and that i think gravitated me more towards my interest in drawing mm -hmm. and other art media you know now you're doing you know computer drawing you know computer animation type things and, and stuff like that um so yeah i think you know you're smart as a whip you get better grades than dad or your eye ever did you know when we were your age not that it's a competition not that it's a competition because i'm not winning yeah you are winning um and i think that's fantastic that that only means you know, bigger and better things for you, you know, uh, down the road, you know, and, you know, I, I love hearing about your day, you know, when you, you tell me your day, you know, when you get home and, and, you know, it, it's kind of nice hearing, oh, well, now I'm in a group with this new friend or, you know, this friend that I haven't seen in a while, you know, so that part, because, you know, that was always the, I think for me, it just didn't seem like you had a lot of different you know, friends to talk to, or, you know, like you only had like one or two, but you didn't see them throughout the day, you know, and I know that, you know, when you go to class and you don't know anybody in your class, it kind of makes the class a little hard to, to deal with, because if you do have a question or something, you don't have somebody to, to help you, you know, that you're friends with. So it's nice that as the school year's going, you know, you can say, in this class, I know these couple of people, in this class, I know these, and this one, I know, you know, so now at least, you know, you're, you're branching out, which we knew was going to eventually happen. And, you know, so that, you know, so if anything, you know, negative or you know would just be you know being a little bit more you know outgoing because you used to be more outgoing when you were younger as you got a little bit older you you know and i've also improved from another stage which was where i barely ever opened up like mm -hmm. i would just keep my circle of friends i never went out to s like other people like that was mm -hmm. mainly like my sixth grade year because like right i had like my f two best friends my best friends in um, sixth grade, they were not in my class. I right, because I remember sixth grade was kind of rough because you didn't like anybody well, in your class and yeah. you did everything with just that one class. You never changed classes I know. Or, or did anything. And sixth grade was kind of a, a loner year yeah, for you. And we kept saying seventh grade is going to be better because you're going to, you know, have more people and, and, and see more people. And luckily it, it did turn out better. Mm -hmm. Sure did. I think that's all the questions we had. We'll take a quick break, come back and give you your closing remarks and shout outs. Alrighty. Go for closing remarks and shout outs. Well, if I had to do closing remarks today, I would think of getting more along with your parents. If you're a teenager or 
any type of age and you're able to see your parents, you should definitely try to spend as much time as you can with them. I know, like, you can't, like, like it's hard to skip work if you work or it's hard to skip school or all the other important things, but... Sorry. You still... <laughs> You still want to at least have some good quality time with them because you don't know how much time you might have left. Okay. Many shout outs? I'd like to give a shout out to Mommy for joining us whoop, this whoop, week. Whoop, mommy, yay. You weren't on that sheet. That skein zone. <laughs> whoop, whoop. There, we, there go. we go. Yeah. All right. Uh, I think that's all we had for this week. Uh, thank you, Mommy, for joining us. Thank you for having me. And uh, another one in the books. Yay. Bye, everyone. Bye. Oh, wait, I'm not even looking in the right one. No, it's Bye. okay. <laughs> Bye.